Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are, we are live at the Web Summit here in the UN SDG Media Zone, and we're also live around the world on UN Web TV. Uh, I'm Angus Rennie with the UN Global Compact, and delighted to be here today with a great group of innovators, change agents, thought leaders, to talk about breakthrough innovation for the SDGs. And hot off the press, just yesterday, the UN Global Compact, together with PA Consulting and Volons, released a framework for breakthrough impact on the SDGs through innovation, and we'll be talking about that today. So let me introduce our panelists. Beside me, we have Louise Roper, who's the Chief Executive Officer of Volans. Uh, hello. Gualter Christosomo, Chief Sustainability Officer of SEA. Hola. And David Rakoski, Circular Economy and Sustainability Co-Leader at PA Consulting. Hi, Angus. Welcome to you all. So let's start by talking a bit about this new framework that's a really exciting, practical tool. Um, David, Louise, Walter, you were involved very intimately in the creation of this. Um, how would it add value for a company seeking to innovate and advance the SDGs? If I can start. Um, so the framework we released yesterday is um, the result of many years of work and research, but it's boiled down to being quite practical. So a company can say, step by step, sorry. Um, so a company can go through it step by step, um, find more resources, and also look at inspirational case studies. Great, David? Uh, my, my view is sustainability needs to be at the core of innovation. Um, and consumers and customers want that increasingly. And I think um, uh, they really want organizations to put purpose first. And if I, if I look at how um, innovation has been done um, uh, traditionally and how sustainability is featured in innovation up to now, it tends to be, it can often be afterthought. How do I actually um, make, uh, once I've developed my product and I'm bringing it to market, how do I make it more sustainable? How do I actually reduce some of the impact it, it can have? And I think what the guide does is it really starts to turn that on its head and it says actually sustainability should be one of the lenses you innovate through. It should be something you think about at the start and it really looks at the traditional and, um, and widespread ways that companies tend to ideate at the start of innovation processes. And it says how can we actually bring sustainability into those and gives very practical tips. So it's uh, something I would really urge people who are, and organizations who are starting to um, really want to bring sustainability into the way they're doing things to pick up and read and, uh, and use. That's fantastic. Now, Walter, from, from a very practical, concrete perspective as a company, uh, what does the breakthrough innovation mindset mean for you? What, what's an example of how that really plays out? Okay, for the beginning, it is a pleasure to be here and to receive you here in Portugal, in my country. So, and to be here in a web segment where is a, a breakthrough atmosphere, okay? So, to be and be involved in the breakthrough, say, is engineering center. So, we are always in the breakthrough mindset. For example, to, for the people to understand here with a real case what is breakthrough and how we live the breakthrough mindset and innovation. For example, we develop a platform we can measure, which is called AIR. We can measure in real time the CO2 that you avoid uh, related with your mobility. So we quantify the CO2 that you avoid with mobility, but at the same time we put value on that CO2 that you avoid and after that, you can change that CO2 that you avoid for other products, service, or even pay municipal taxes in some municipalities. The mindset in here was the, the breakthrough. It, it was not the technology. It, it, it wasn't the blockchain which is behind. It's the mindset. Which is the mindset? Is to value the CO2 that you avoid in your sustainable mobility and not value or not pay the CO2 that you produce in your mobility. So is this mindset breakthrough which is really, really interesting. And it was very, very interesting to work with Volans, PA and the other partners in the breakthrough because it's the mindset and these are a lot of opportunities with SDGs to work with this mindset and breakthrough. Because we are in Portugal near the oceans, I would like to uh, just to the people understand the SDGs is an ocean of challenge, is an ocean of breakthrough mind, and 
I think if the people has this disruptive mind, it's not disruptive technology, I think it's disruptive mind that we need to implement even better the SDGs and this concept. David, you wanted to come in here. You were talking about how this process actually changed the way you think about innovation and sustainability. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really building on the, um, the mindset point you just made, um, uh, Gwalta. I mean, obviously, I'm not as poetic as you, so I, the, no, no oceans in my example. But um, I, I think um, the mindset, I think, was a really, um, it became really uh, a, a sort of a powerful learning for me as we went through this journey. And... If I look at um, how uh, I traditionally looked at um, uh, innovation in the space of sustainability, bringing together business models and, uh, and technology, what became very apparent to me is that actually without that mindset, you can't, um, you're not going to get that exponential impact. And I've got a good example actually that brings it to life. We worked um, for a, a, a multinational organization producing a, a consumer device for them that was being produced in the many thousands. And we made that circular at the outset. Now, by that I mean we made it so that you um, could recover the electronics at the end, take them and reuse them in future, future items. So you um, both would remove a lot of the waste from the product, but you'd also, um, you'd also uh, recover 20% of the value from the product. Now, what was interesting was in that design process, the effort to do that was really quite minimal and the cost incurred was very small. The fact that the organization had made that decision at the outset, they'd been bold, they'd said, we want to be breakthrough on this, we want to challenge the status quo, and we want to do that, meant it actually gave us the mandate to do things differently and, uh, and deliver value with actually, in this case, um, very little, uh, neg uh, well, no, no cost or negative impact. Louise? <laughs> on mindset? Well, so just to recap, I guess, the, the breakthrough, what we identified that was there's three big panels in achieving exponential breakthrough. So rather than incremental change or business as usual, how do you really accelerate that? And one is harnessing technologies, which is part of why we're here at Web Summit. The second is um, business models, and David referenced circular. Um, but third is that mindset piece. And what, what we're seeing and what there's lots of examples of is you can have great technology, you can have a new business model, but it will not work unless not only the leader of the, of the organization has the mindset, dares to do things a little bit differently, relinquish control and trust um, both partners but also employees. And like for me, one of the core learnings was if you're not feeling uncomfortable, you're not doing it right. The, the breakthrough and exponential change is deeply uncomfortable. And we're seeing it quite a lot. We are running kind of imaginariums with leadership teams to try and allow them to think outside the box using facts and figures, but, but really shifting that mindset um, to allow, well, what happens? Does my company have a role in 2030 when hopefully we're much closer to achieving the SDGs? Or should we really not exist? Um, I think it's, it's such a unique resource in that the SDGs themselves are a framework for innovation and then with this mindset change and the breakthrough concepts, you can really take things to the next level. We're surrounded by innovators here at the Web Summit. Uh, and for those of them who may be less familiar with the opportunities, the multi-trillion opportunities for business in advancing the SDGs, and with this new incredible resource, what would you say to them about the opportunity with the work that you've done um, to take their business to the next level? So there are plenty of reports, some by us, that show that there are trillions of dollars of opportunity in, in trying to solve the SDGs. But really, the, for me, the opportunity is to survive in, in the next decade. Um, looking at the SDGs, we talk about them as a purchase order from the future. This is, these are all needs, not needs of maybe your, your immediate customer base, but it will be. Um, so taking those as a starting point in innovation, and actually we, we should say that that's, that's what the whole framework has been built on, is start with the SDGs as the problem you are trying to solve, um, and, and you may, if you succeed, survive in the next decade. Companies that don't start innovating to this will not. David, you had a unique example of a company that you were recently engaging that had this approach. Uh, tell us more about that. 
I think actually I've, there's, there's a couple who have recently come to us in this space. Um, so one, a multinational organization we just started working with a couple of weeks ago, whose brief to us was actually, how do we become part of the solution for SDG number six rather than part of the problem? And, th and I'm not going to say that that's the norm, that um, we're having those conversations all the time. There's still a lot of education we're doing. But it is really refreshing to see organizations now coming and actually having that as part of their brief and we're um, uh, uh, helping them on that journey. I think there's a, um, another organization we work with, um, who uh, a, a super company called Millican, who I think do really embrace the breakthrough mindset. And again, they came to us saying, um, we want to help create a positive future for sus and a sustainable future for plastics. So how can we do that? And we, um, we help them, and I think going on some of the conversations we were having just in the margins of this, we, we help them understand what the, the kind of problem space is now um, and, and, uh, and understand what the future might be for single-use plastics. And really that is the kind of insight that you then can put into the, the practical guidance that you've got in the, in the guide to be able to take forward and develop um, really uh, powerful innovations that unlock the value that the, uh, the uh, SDGs op uh, offer. Uh, for uh, for, for Soya, we we think they are uh, they, they have an important role in this process because they are innovative, they are breakthrough, and even in our pr process of co-creation, we bring them to the discussion with us and be a part of the solution. And I think the is our responsibility as companies who are more implemented in the field to also to engage them to the SDGs and show them that is not only opportunity to solve the to save the world, but a business opportunity, a sustainable opportunity for their company be existed 20 years and be with us uh, solving that. But at the same time, we're working with them, not entrepreneurs, but also with a new generation to help us to create a better world and try to engage them to be owners of the SDG. That's also very important for us to engage them what is the importance of the SDG and the opportunities that the SDG have to solve not only the planet but their company and their solutions. It's such a great concept of just relishing the challenge and, 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 and welcoming the problem as you know fundamental to the work that you're doing. Um, Louise, what about the challenges? You know, what about what about um, those who are committed to business as usual? And how do you convince uh, a company of the value of this work? Um, so, how do you convince a company? The you what we tend to do is we tend to use hard facts. We we do a lot of trend research and, and synthesis of, of what's going on. Um, everybody talks about, and it is based in fact that younger generations are really keen for for purposeful companies, etc. So, and actually recently, a very very large Asian company came to us and said, "What um, can you con help me convince my leadership? This is a head of brand, actually, that we should be sustainable." And so we 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 did a lot of research and we created sort of the risks and opportunities. And, and thankfully, right now, there is so much more opportunity in, in being sustainable um, than there are risks in, in stepping forward. So that's, that's one thing we do. We, we use hard facts, and then we start working with individuals because unless the people feel viscerally and emotionally engaged that this is something they need to do, it won't happen. It's very easy to step away. Um, the other point I would make, actually, is you have to allow the space for um, the disruption to grow. So if you're looking at changing business models, make sure that's ring-fenced somehow, either by this company, this Asian company, they're like, yeah, you can play with Europe, which is much, you know, 5% of the, the total business. So you, you find places you can experiment, find places where the existing business can feel that they're going ahead with business as usual, but actually the Trojan horse is working hard. One thing that I think is also important is breakthrough, breakthrough mind, the mindset is there is, there is no failure. The failure is a part of the process. So we don't, for us in SAYA, we never fail. It's a part of the process. So 
it's also important to have this. And what we are doing here, exactly in this moment, and I would like to say thank you to Global Compass, we are doing breakthrough because we are co-creating ideas, and that's it's wonderful what Global Compact is doing, even in this moment, not only when they produce platform, but when we produce this kind of situation where we are discussing these ideas, this is breakthrough, this is co-creation, and that is the spirit also of the SDGs, all together trying to discuss these issues. I, I'm just going to echo really some of um, well, all the points, but also some of what you said, Louise, on the opportunities. It's uh, focusing on the negative. I mean, that's, I think that's had its, a bit of its place. Now everyone is looking at the opportunities, and they're there, they're, they're, and they're huge. And I think it's helping um, organizations on that journey to unlock them, and that's what we're all, that's what we're all here, and that's what Breakthrough is all about. I want to pick up on something you said, Walter, about you know the, the role of the Global Compact and, and the collaboration that led to this um, this great framework. Um, you know, Goal 17 is 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 all about partnerships, and and you know the the breakthrough innovation concept also involves bringing others in who you might not traditionally work with. You know, could maybe you touch on the the collaborative aspect of of this approach? can start. <laughs> I'll be very short this time. Um, what it is, so part of the mindset, part of the new business models, when we talk about new business model, we're talking about shared, you know, sharing economy, um, circular and so on, and they don't work with individual companies anymore. So, so the collaboration has to happen. Um, right. And yeah, that's, I was going to tell you. In Saya, we only know how to work in co in co-creation, yeah. collaboration. We, we, even we use a lot of the African problem. If, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go further, go together. Even that is our spirit. We, we only like to work in partnership. It's not easy because sometimes to put the, in the same table some companies which are in the same market yes. and they are competitive. Sometimes it's not easy, but it's a, it's a way that we need to do, but the challenge are so good and the output of the co-creation is wonderful. After that, they realize that it's very good to be breakthrough. And one of the success for say to be breakthrough is because our CEO is a breakthrough mind and he only accept people to work with him which are also breakthrough or engage them to be breakthrough and go outside for mm -hmm. their comfort zone. On the, on the point of um, collaboration, everyone's very used to the term value chain. Inherently in a value chain, there's many, many players. Unless you're working together, um, you're not going to achieve the benefit that's on offer here. Um, but also, I think it's, it's very interesting. People seem to be, um, and organizations seem to be very familiar with their um, upstream value chain, how they get all the materials together, how they produce stuff. That, those downstream aspects of what happens to products afterwards and how you unlock that value that's where lots of organizations, I think, are now starting to um, wake up to the, the, the sheer size of the opportunity there um, in the sustainability space. But also the need that the only way you're going to um, uh, access that value is, is through collaboration. You have to have those partnerships. And can I, can I turn it back to you a little bit? Because I think this kind of sort of new tomorrow also poses a brilliant opportunity for the Global Compact to um, kind of take business platforms into the next generation. So how do you really link up businesses who need, uh, as they need to be, to learn from each other and, and to collaborate either in detail or strategically? So, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point, and I think this is just the start of this work. I mean, we were talking about the need to mainstream it through the approach that the Global Compact takes, but you know, all sustainability-minded organizations should take, um, making this the core. Uh, we're, we're, we're close to wrapping up, um, and we're about to get off the stage and interact with thousands of companies and, and innovators. Um, you know, closing thoughts, you know, what would you say to someone who saw your SDG pin and, and didn't know what this was all about? Um, that especially for the mind here so I have to confess my first career was in technology um, and sort of on the bleeding edge and the people in these pavilions ha tend to have half the mindset already um, so to, to look at the SDGs and um, embrace them as the next summit the next Everest um, I think is what I would suggest they do I think they would find it a lot more fun and um, beneficial. 
so I think um, uh, the SDGs, the actual language of them might not mean something to everybody, but sustainability does, and it does in their own, uh, and there are uh, relationships that everybody will have with that as a topic. So I think it's just about really finding the right language to communicate with people, with organizations, so that they can translate it into their own terms. Uh, and it is, the, it is the next, in my view, the next um, uh, industrial revolution we're gonna go through which is um, obviously, I know something that you guys share as well, is going to be um, predicated on, uh, on the SDGs and sustainability. Uh, when they ask me what is this ring, I tell them that this is the lighthouse of the future. I love that. The, the summit, the mountain to climb, the lighthouse, and a lot of fun to be had along the way if you have the right approach, it sounds like. Well, thank you to each of you for your insights and um, be sure to check out this great new practical tool that um, uh, will be sure to help your organizations embrace a breakthrough, uh, breakthrough innovation for the SDGs. Thanks everyone. Thank, thank you. Thank you.